gonna do two brake calipers why not let's just let's do this properly let's just do a complete front end brake refresh so we'll put our brand new discs on put our brand new pads on and then put our brand new caliper on so we've got complete front brake refresh here on this old Cortina so just working on the clutch now alrighty so that's the uh, pressure plate on, bolt it down and throw out bearing goes on next. Look at that, all new parts, fantastic. We've got ourselves a new clutch, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that great? Welcome back to the channel everyone. This is Car Mechanic Simulator 2015. It's a dark and stormy day outside, so I thought why not try out my hand at fixing some cars, uh, quite therapeutic. And hopefully it's gonna be pretty straightforward today got two cars in the garage at the moment. Now I haven't played this game in a little while and I certainly haven't featured it on my channel before. I did feature Car Mechanic Simulator 2014, that was many years ago now. And since then there's been 2015 which is this release, 2018 and there's also a brand new release if I'm not mistaken, 2021 I believe. That's also coming out very soon. The reason why I'm choosing to play 2015 today, however, is because this is, in my mind, a classic. Um, and if you look on Steam, you'll notice that it's got some pretty good reviews still. So I think this is probably the gem out of all of the car mechanic franchises out there. Car mechanic simulator franchises, I should say. And the reason for that is, and I'll go into this in a little bit more detail shortly, is just around the mechanics and the controls and things like that and how you can drain oil and all that sort of thing it puts a little bit more into your hands make it makes it a little bit more realistic in this version as opposed to 2018 and newer anyway here we are in the garage so let's let's have a little bit of a look around so the basic premise of this game is basically you get vehicles come in and you've got to fix them now here is my mercedes 300 sl and here is the vehicle we'll be working on today. Unfortunately, no Mercedes here. This is a lowly Salem. Salem something or other. Now, it's not a licensed car name, that one. But anyway, uh, here over at the desk, you can accept new jobs, as you can see, by using the telephone. Now, whenever the telephone rings, that means you've got a new job. We've got a few cars waiting for us, but we've got a full house in the garage right now. We've got two lifts with cars on them both, so won't be accepting anything new right now. So let's go ahead and press O to bring up order information. We can see there that there's four main issues with this vehicle. First one being tapping sounds from the engine bay, filters need replacing, brake problems, and general gearbox uh, control and repair. All right, so let's start with the filters first. Air filter, oil filter, and fuel filter. So over here at the little admin desk, you've got a computer and by entering into the parts shop online you can search for your parts and I've just typed in filter here now with the oil filter just ensure that you choose oil filter I4 which is the four cylinder version because this car has a four cylinder now you'll notice that uh, the game is actually quite detailed not quite as detailed as say my summer car so you don't have the individual like you won't have brake lines that leak and things like that but let me show you this. This is one thing right here that Car Mechanic Simulator 2018 and onwards does not do. You cannot move this little oil bin around manually and you cannot position it manually. And you cannot drain the oil manually using the drain plug, all right? So in this game, you can still do that, all right? I know that's not a big deal maybe for some of you, but I think it's a big deal. So I love that you can still do that or that you can do that here in 2015 so just pull the oil filter off there you can see the condition of it was pretty bad uh, when items are shown in red uh, and the condition is like 20 odd percent or so they're basically unserviceable so the parts need to be replaced now what I'm doing today is just replacing the oil filter which is a little bit strange I guess in real life what you'd want to do is change the oil at the same time but I guess in the game it just wants you to change the oil filter what I'm going to do is just check the condition of the oil and I can see here that it's well it's yeah it's nice and golden and it's pretty much at the max mark so no need to touch to touch the oil today so I've just changed the oil filter so that was quick and easy 
Uh, next thing is the fuel filter. You can see here on these old engines, they're actually located pretty much on the engine. Now, because it looks rusty and you can see their condition is like 1%, that pretty much denotes that it needs to be replaced. So if we look here at the filters, we can see here oil filters being ticked because I've just replaced it. So I just need to do the fuel and the air filter now. So I'm just gonna select that, put in the new fuel filter and attack the air filter next. Whoops, there's little latches on here. This is looks like a rather modern air box for such an old car. This looks like an old Ford Cortina to me, so that's why I'm calling it that. Never mind that it's called a Salem something or rather in the game. But yes, these engines never really had air filter boxes like this as far as I, I know, but I could be wrong. Anyway, put the new air filter in, like so, and you can see the old one beside it there. Put the old air filter cover back on, it's a little bit worn out, but no problems. Oops. And put the covers back on. These clips also have wear and tear. But they're fine. So this game does assume that you've got a, a rather basic knowledge of where things are on an automobile. Otherwise you'll find yourself clicking around for a long time. <laughs> Alright, air filter, fuel filter, oil filter all changed. So filter's done. Now let's attack the next problem, which is brakes. Now with the brakes, normally the front brakes in a vehicle wear out first or wear out earlier than the rear brakes. So I'm just going to check the front wheels, take the front wheels off and check the front brake status, I guess you could say first. So take off the wheel nuts here, lug nuts as you may call them. All right. Now looking at this brake disc, you can see the game renders a little bit of rust on there. So that's meant to um, simulate wear and tear, I guess. You can also see some scoring marks there, hopefully on the disc. So yeah, I'd say the disc probably needs to be replaced on the vehicle. Now what we'll do is just take the caliper off first. I've got two bolts here. Now in reality, these bolts really are really on there real tight. So yeah. So with the caliper off, you can take the pads off. I've done jobs like this in real life on vehicles. Um, let's just say it doesn't go quite as smoothly as this. All right, so let's check condition here as I um, imagined, as I suspected. The pads are actually not too bad. They're on the amber, 58%, but the disc is basically gone and needs to be replaced. But I would recommend replacing these as a pair. The caliper's fine, 60%. So yeah, the pads and the discs, the pad and discs, the pads and the discs, sorry. <laughs> I'll get it right. It does need to be changed on the left-hand side. So always best to do these things in pairs and not only that if you're going to do the right hand side or left hand side in this case you're best to do the same thing on the right hand side as well so we're going to grab ourselves two sets of brake discs here ventilated ones and two sets of brake pads as well always best to do these things in pairs never just change the discs and then put the old pads back on that's that's a terrible idea if you are going to change only the pads, in real life it's a good idea to get the discs machined or the disc machined, but yeah, in this case the discs are too far gone as you can see. Nicely scored. So yeah, we're going to need to replace, I would say probably even the caliper in this case. Uh, calipers generally don't need to replace them in, in real life. Normally what happens is, is that the seals may start to leak. They can be reconditioned, but yeah. I don't think this game models repairing things as much. Let's take a look. Yeah, okay. So the right hand caliper needs replacing as well. Ah, okay. All right, right hand caliper. Actually, let's take the pads off and the disc and check them out. So disc is fine or fine-ish, but the pads are gone. So yeah, again, it's good that we bought the additional disc brake because the discs um, are pretty much wearing down. And the caliper, I'm gonna to need to order a new right hand caliper, unfortunately, There's no getting around that. Just do that here, that's $75. 
So it's one size fits all. Actually, you know what? I've just decided I'm going to do two brake calipers. Why not? Let's just let's do this properly. Let's just do a complete front end brake refresh. So let's put our brand new discs on. Put our brand new pads on. Yeah. And then put our brand new caliper on. So we've got a complete front brake refresh here on this old Cortina. If only it were that straightforward to do in real life. You would have to bleed the brakes in real life as well if you were doing something like a caliper replacement because you'd have to disconnect the brake lines and all that sort of stuff. Fun times. Not modeled in the game. All right. Pads, discs, caliper. Disc and caliper, I should say. All right. And you'd be using obviously a torque wrench to torque down some of those bolts in reality as well. And I'm just trying to do these <laughs> wheel nuts in a star pattern here. Not that it really make, makes much of a difference for the game, but whatever. I've got a fair modicum of knowledge um, and experience working on vehicles in real life. So that's what makes playing this game quite enjoyable as well. Now what I'm going to do is just check the rear brakes as well because I can see there that there's some faulty parts not yet discovered. So just doing that now. Now we've got a different brake setup on the back. We've got these brake drums. Now in reality you'd be pulling out your rubber mallet and you'd be whacking these drums to try and break them loose. Don't need to do that in the game. Alright, so I'd say that if you're going to change the shoes, you might as well do the wheel cylinders as well. As you can see there, the drums are pretty much gone. Now to take the shoes off of a drum brake in real life, you have to fight some springs and some brackets and clamps and little mounting hooks and whatnot. Again, no such issue in the game, just click, remove them. Alright, so two sets of brake shoes, two sets of brake drums, and wheel cylinders. I think, yeah, I'm just going to type in cylinder here. Drum wheel cylinder. That should actually say drum brake cylinder, so that when you type in brake, it actually shows up in the search result. Anyway, whatever. Alright, so I imagine that I'm going to need to do the same thing on both sides here. So I've just bought parts for both sides. Let's go ahead and put a new brand new wheel cylinder in. Now I have done this in real life as well as it happens on an old Mitsubishi 4x4. So putting a new wheel cylinder in involves um, disconnecting brake lines and whatnot, bleeding the brakes afterwards. And putting in the new shoes as well takes a little bit of maneuvering of clips and springs and whatnot. Again, very much simplified in the simulator. Would be nice if there was a, a fully real simulator that actually allowed you to do that, even like in VR. Now that would be something completely different indeed, wouldn't it? All right, now I suspect it's gonna be much the same on the right hand side here, folks. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this now and uh, we'll be back shortly once this is done. All right, now we're back. Basically replaced all the brake components on the right rear side as well. Alrighty, so that's it. Now if we go back and look at our objectives, we can see that brake problems fixed, filters are fixed. There's just tapping sounds from the engine bay and the gearbox issue. Okay, so tapping noise. That could be the valve, like the tappets or the lifters. Could be the camshaft, but might just start simple here. Um, it's probably not going to be the belts or the tensioner or the pulleys or anything like that. The water pump. I'm going to just take a wild guess here and go with the radiator fan. I don't know why, but I mean, if it's making a noise, and there you go. Condition is 27%. It's well and truly in the red. So. Yeah, a little bit strange. You wouldn't have thought that's an engine part. Well, I guess it's part of the cooling system. But I guess maybe a fan blade is cracked or bent or something and it's rubbing on the shroud maybe, making that tapping noise. Who knows? The radiator doesn't look great either, but I'm just going to replace the radiator fan. And we've got a nice new fan on there. Fantastic. 
All right, so the there you go. So that's now fixed tapping sounds from the engine bay. The last thing is general gearbox control and repair. Now, if you were playing my summer car, this could be a linkage issue, and you've got individual bolts on the linkages. Man, I missed that game. I should probably play that game actually. Please make a comment below if you want me to play My Summer Car again. <laughs> it's been a little while actually. I think my, my Summer Car has an issue with the engine. So yes, could be a fun video that one. Anyway, back to this game. And alright, so this is a rear wheel drive vehicle. For those of you who may not know, that means the engine drives the rear wheels, not the front wheels. So if it's a gearbox issue, all right, what I'm going to do here anyway, let's just start by taking off the drive shaft. And I'll explain why I'm doing this in just a second. So the drive shaft connects the gearbox to the rear axle, to the rear differential. And basically the drive shaft transmits that power to the rear axle, the rear differential right here, and drives the wheels. So let's get rid of the drive shaft. So there's four bolts on the universal joint flange thingamabob here and another four bolts up front no doubt that's one very interesting looking shaft it's it's quite skinny actually it doesn't look right it doesn't quite look to scale with the vehicle but anyway not even going to bother checking the suspension parts all right so the gearbox is now disconnected from the rear of the vehicle it's just attached to the engine all right so basically what I'm going to do here is take the gearbox out. So take the gearbox off the engine. Now in order to do that, what I need to do still is remove the starter motor, I believe. So two bolts to get rid of the starter motor. And then we've got to raise the vehicle up once again. All right, I'm gonna speed up those car lifts in the future, don't worry, so you won't have to wait around while I do that. All right, so yep, now the gearbox is showing in green. That means I can actually remove it. So take off the bell housing bolts there that attach the gearbox to the engine. Now, in reality, you'd be using some sort of a jack and placing that under the gearbox so it doesn't fall down awkwardly off the engine like this once it comes loose. And just as I suspected, it's a clutch issue most likely. I can see those clutch parts. Checking the gearbox here, this condition is like 62%. Gearboxes themselves last a long time, maybe the life of the car, so I couldn't imagine changing the gearbox. I mean, they get noisy and whiny, but as long as there's oil in them, they generally last. All right, so if he's having issues, or if the person's having issues with the gearbox um, engaging gears, it can actually be the clutch is not disengaging or engaging properly. So, or disengaging, I should say. And once I get these clutch parts off, so I've just taken the pressure plate off, take off the uh, friction disc. And the clutch plate or friction disc is actually not too bad. The pressure plate, however, is completely gone, as you can see here. So that's not allowing the clutch to be disengaged correctly. And yeah, that can cause gear engagement issues too, believe it or not. Now the flywheel itself doesn't look very great either. It's definitely seen better days. Normally what you do is you take the flywheel off and you would attempt to machine it in real life. Unless it's one of those dual mass modern flywheel things, which I doubt this is, but let's walk over to the repair desk. No, we cannot do anything to the flywheel. Okay, that's fantastic. So this is gonna be a big one for the owner. Gonna to have to replace the entire clutch and flywheel. Normally when you're doing the clutch, you'd wanna do obviously the disc, the pressure plate, the throw out bearing, all that sort of stuff in one hit. But in this case, we're gonna need the flywheel as well. So I just did a search for flywheel, got a new one of those. Clutch release bearing or throw out bearing as we call it. As you can see, it's actually not too bad. 59%, but obviously if you come this far, you might as well replace it. You'd be stupid not to. Pressure plate and clutch plate. So completely new clutch and flywheel going on to this vehicle. So let's go ahead and put the flywheel back on. Now in reality, obviously, 
putting the flywheel on, you've got some pretty massive bolts holding that on, about six bolts at least, torquing them down with a torque wrench, or even using a rattle gun first perhaps. I've never actually done a clutch job, but I know that you do need to use a clutch aligning tool when you're putting the friction disc in and the pressure plate before you do up the pressure plate bolts that is. But in the game, you don't have to worry about that. Just turn that spanner. Alrighty. So that's the uh, pressure plate on, bolt it down and throw out bearing goes on next. Look at that, all new parts, fantastic. We've got ourselves a new clutch, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that great? All right. So next thing to do now is put the gearbox back on. And I'm just wondering why I can't do that. Hang on, yes I can, there we go. Put the bell housing bolts back in. Uh, there's a fair amount of maneuvering to do here in real life, trying to get that gearbox input shaft through the pressure plate and through the friction disc there. Anyway, it's not simulated here. And start a motor. Okay, so I'm gonna have to lower the vehicle down. Okay, so just putting the starter motor belts, bolts back on, just two of those. All right, now back up she goes. See that? I did a nice little uh, jump, cut, as they call it. All right, drive shaft, so four bolts on the rear uni and four bolts on the front. Just gonna do them real quick here. Okay, done. All right. Oh, there we are on the ground. <laughs> And close goes the hood. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Now we've got parts here, all the worn out parts from the vehicle. You can actually sell these off for a rather deflated price, which is fine. You can still make some money back for them. I guess you're selling them for scrap. In real life, I guess you'd get probably not much at all for these parts, um, unless they were in rather moderately serviceable condition. But yeah, that's interesting in the game anyway. So as you can see here, I'm um, not sure what this part, repair parts exceeding minimum condition stuff is, but I've just earned two grand for that job and the vehicle is fixed and out of the shop. Now this game has quite a few features on it. I'm uh, just taking a look at the uh, Mercedes 300 SL here. Uh, but yes, you can do quite a bit of repair. You cannot remove engines. I think you can change some engines on some vehicles. Just walking back here and looking at my upcoming orders, you can see, yeah, I've got here looks what looks like a an old, uh, like a Dodge kind of Charger or something. Uh, can't think of the name right now, but American Muscle anyway. Um, but it's locked out for now because my XP is too low. So I'm going to do some more missions in the background uh, in between videos. Here's the lovely Mercedes-Benz 300 SL. Looking forward to uh, hacking this apart and seeing if we can't fix it. There's our free lift. And yeah, that's basically it. Lots of room in here for activities, as you can see. <laughs> Fairly well detailed. Take a look at this engine in the 300 SLs, that good old slant six. And I think this thing has, oh wow, repair all engine faults. Okay, so this is gonna be an interesting video, I think, if I choose to uh, make another one. I'm gonna have to pull the engine apart and just see what's going on with this one. I think the brakes are looking okay. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.